Okay, testing, testing. Looks good. Alright, so it came up and I wanted to read it. And I don't want to give a long, drawn out disclaimer at the beginning. But I do just want to say that if somebody else is coming across this or hearing this video, um, what I'm reading doesn't necessarily agree with my personal opinion or concept of of the historical flood of Noah or even other historical floods of other cultures and religions. I'm just reading the Wikipedia article for what it says and I'll try to hold back on commenting my own opinion. Okay, so Wikipedia, I looked up flood myth. Actually it came up from a different article. I'm just going to read it. Flood myth from Wikipedia, the free encyclopedia. Great flood redirects here. For other uses, see Great Flood Disambiguation. Might be worth looking at. A flood myth or deluge myth is a narrative in which a great flood, usually sent by a deity or deities, destroys civilization, often in an act of divine retribution. Parallels are often drawn between the flood waters of these myths and the primeval waters found in certain creation myths, as the flood waters are described as a measure for the cleansing of humanity in preparation for rebirth. Most flood myths also contain a culture hero who represents the human craving for life. The flood myth motif is found among many cultures as seen in the Mesopotamian flood stories Diakalian and Pyrrha in Greek mythology. The Genesis flood narrative, Manu in Hinduism, the Gun Yu in Chinese mythology, Burglemir in Norse mythology, in the lore of Ka'iche in and Maya peoples in Mesoamerica, the Lac Kurt or a Ojibwa tribe of Native Americans in North America, the Muisca and Canary Confederation in South America, and the Aboriginal tribes in Southern Australia. Mythologies. The Mesopotamian flood stories concern the epics of Zerosudra, Gilgamesh, and Atrahasis. The Sumerian king list relies on the mud flood motif to divide its history into pre-flood, antediluvian, and post-flood periods. The pre-flood kings had enormous lifespans, whereas post-flood lifespans were much reduced. The Sumerian flood myth found in the Deluge tablet was the epic of Ziasudra, who heard the gods plan to destroy humanity, in response to which he constructed a vessel, a vessel that delivered him from great waters. In the Atrahasis version, the flood is a river flood. In the Genesis mythology of the Hebrew Bible, Yahweh decides to flood the earth because of the depth of the sinful state of mankind. Righteous Noah is given instructions to build an ark. When the ark is completed, Noah, his family, and representatives of all the animals of the earth are called upon to enter the ark. When the destructive flood begins, all life outside of the ark perishes. After the water recedes, after the waters recede, all those aboard the ark disembark and have Yahweh's promise that he will never judge the earth with a flood again. He causes a rainbow to form as the sign of his promise. In the 19th century, Assyriologist George Smith translated the Babylonian account of a great flood. Further discoveries produced several versions of the Mesopotamian flood myth with the account closest to that in Genesis found in a 700 BC Babylonian copy of the Epic of Gilgamesh. In this work, the hero Gilgamesh meets the immortal man Utnapishtim, and the latter describes how the god Ea instructed him to build a huge vessel in, in anticipation of a deity-created flood that would destroy the world. The vessel would save Utnapishtim, his family, his friends, and animals. In Hindu mythology, texts such, such as the Zatapatha, Brahmana, and the Puranas contain the story of a great flood, wherein the Matsya avatar of Vishnu warns the first man, Manu, of the impending flood and also advises him to build a giant boat. In Plato's Timaeus, Timaeus says that the bronze race of humans had been making wars constantly. Zeus was 
Titan wars constantly, Zeus was angered and decided to punish humanity by a flood. Prometheus, the Titan, knew of this and told the secret to Deucalion, advising him to build an ark in order to be saved. After nine nights and days, the water started receding and the ark was landed at Mount Parnassus. Claims of Historicity See also Outburst Flood in ancient Mesopotamia, the Sumerian king list reads, After kingship came down from heaven, the kingship was taken to Shurupak. In Shurupak, Ubaratutu became king. He ruled for five sars and one ner. In five cities, eight kings, they ruled for 241,200 years. Then the flood swept over. Excavations in Iraq have revealed evidence of localized flooding at Shurupak, modern Tel Farah, Iraq, and various other Sumerian cities. A layer of riverine sediments, radiocarbon dated to about 2900 BC, interrupts the continent continuity of settlement extending as far north as the city of Kish, which took over hegemony after the flood. Polychrome pottery from the Jemdet Nasser period, 3000 to 2900 BC, was discovered immediately below the Shurupak flood stratum. Other sites such as Ur, Kish, Uruk, Lagash, Nineveh all present evidence of flooding. However, this evidence comes from different time periods. Geologically, the Shurupak flood coincides with the 5.9 kilo year event at the end of the older Peron. It would seem to have been a localized event caused through the damming of the Kurun through the spread of dunes, flooding into the Tigris and simultaneous heavy rainfall in the Nineveh region, spilling across the Euphra Euphrates. In Israel, there is no such evidence of a wide split widespread flood. Given the similarities in the Mesopotamian flood story and the biblical account, it would seem that they have a common origin in the memories of the Shurupak account. <coughs> Floods in the wake of the last glacial period may have inspired myths that survive to this day. It has been postulated that the deluge myth in North America may be based on sudden rise in sea levels caused by rapid draining, draining of prehistoric Lake Agassiz at the end of the last ice age, about 8,400 years ago. The geography of Mesopotamian area was considerably changed by the filling of the Persian Gulf after sea waters rose following the last glacial period. Global sea levels were around 120 meters, 390 feet lower around 1800 BP and rose <clears throat> until 8,000 BP when they reached current levels, which are now average in 40 meters above the floor of the Gulf, which was huge. Uh, these statistics are hard to really get your head around unless you're actually interested in uh, knowing this for whatever reason. Low-lying and fertile region of Mesopotamia, in which human habitation is thought to have been strong around the Gulf bases, oases for 100,000 years, a sudden increase in the... Okay. Uh, Adrian Mayer promoted the hypothesis that the global flood stories were inspired by ancient observations of seashells and fish fossils. Boring. Uh, another further hypothesis is that a meteor or comet smashed into the Indian Ocean around 3000 to 2800 BC, created the 30 kilometer undersea Burkle crater that genera and generated a giant tsunami that flooded coastal lands. In the late 17th century, there was a famous, there were, were famous speculations accounting for the Genesis flood by natural causes. Thomas Burnett's Tellurus Theoria Sacra, Sacred Theory of the Earth, had water rising from the Hollow Earth. Period. Well, that's kind of neat. Okay. William Wiston's A New Theory of the Earth postulated that major changes in the Earth's history could be attributed to the action of comets. Speculation regarding the Duakalion myth <coughs> has also been introduced, whereby a large tsunami in the Mediterranean Sea caused by the Thera eruption, with approximate geological date of 1630 to 1600 BC, is the myth's historical basis, although the tsunami hit the South Aegean Sea and Crete. It did not affect cities in the mainland of Greece, such as Mycenae, Athens, and Thebes, which continued to prosper, indicating that it had a local rather than region-wide effect. 
One of the latest and quite controversial hypotheses hypotheses of long-term flooding is the Black Sea Deluge hypothesis which argues for a catastrophic deluge of about 5600 BC from the Mediterranean Sea into the Black Sea. This has been the subject of considerable discussion. A worldwide deluge such as described in Genesis is incompatible with modern scientific understanding of natural history, especially geology and paleontology. To compare some of the largest tsunamis in history resulting from the Chicxulub impact 66 million years ago were thought to have affected roughly the entire Americas or nearly all of the Western Hemisphere.